your work initially, before, long before meeting you, and it's it's like dark. I mean, some of it's kind of scary. Some of it's just so vulnerable. You want to almost step away. Some of it just, I mean, it's dark. And so then I meet Jesse. I meet you, and you're like this teddy bear who is in no way dark. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> in no way are you dark you're like light if anything and oh, thank you. yeah and I um I, I just find that so intriguing <laughs> you're just uh, to me you're an you're an enigma I think I'm using that word correctly yeah um, yeah well I like using art as a way of getting the dark emotions out yeah kind of to get rid of them right so that I can feel light otherwise I don't feel, I'm not in a dark place when I'm drawing these pieces and I'm actually kind of at this point now where I'm like I don't want to make work that just feels dark anymore I still uh -huh. want the darkness yeah but you can see in some of my underwater pieces, they're very dark and there's that element of struggle and danger there. Right, even. right. They're like my, in ways, my most vulnerable pieces because those people are in physical danger and yet they're whimsical, weightless underwater. It's magical. Everything's floating. Gravity's gone. Um, and I'm trying to balance out really, really magical with, and happy with really, really dark and dangerous at the same time in my work now. Wow. <laughs> That's um, that's a tall order. <laughs> yeah, that's like sort of amazing. But also when I read this article about you, um, like you spent two weeks on, um, I think it's Abyss, this one right here. Mm -hmm. You spent yeah. two weeks just in Photoshop. Um, yeah. placing together all the different photos and elements that you had taken in various interesting ways. Um, I mean, you've taken the photos in interesting ways. You took the, some of the photos on your honeymoon, if yes. I remember that correctly, and that you started mm -hmm. to plan the piece on your honeymoon. Then you spent two weeks in Photoshop. Now, what one thing I know about you, Jesse, is that you are no slouch. Like you are not playing video games for eight hours a day and then working on your art for an hour. You know, like you, <laughs> right. you work, like you mm -hmm. sit down and work. So if you spent two weeks in Photoshop, like yes. that to me is mind blowing. And then on top of that enormous amount of time spent in Photoshop planning the piece, the pre pre-production stuff, um, you, um, you're like so deep, like you, 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 you like, you, uh, sorry, I'm rarely at a loss, loss for words like this. You're so deep that like every element has some sort of meaning attached to it. And I have to guess that you don't even think about putting an element in unless it has a meaning attached to it. Yes, that that's right. Um, I, when I, my dad has, um, he's been around since day one of my art. And anytime I would try to put something in the background or something yeah. that had no relevance. Like I remember one time I was like, I want to put fire and lightning bolts in the back <laughs> of my piece. Cause I think it would look cool. And I was in high school at the time. He's like, that's really cool. But like, what would that mean? And so I was like, I don't know. And, and then I didn't do it. <laughs> and he, he really questioned, um, He's been there all along my development, but he would always really question any time I would try to add in something for a background uh, that didn't belong or any other element. And uh, I think that's part of the reason my work has the black background it does. And I've relied a lot on simplicity and my work is kind of getting a little bit more intricate. But yeah, I always try to have some reason for what I'm going to have in my piece it has to say something or communicate some sort of feeling in a way because if not that same space within the image could be used to greater tell uh greater show something that does have importance and relevance in a piece so what is your what's your dad's background is he a photographer a writer i mean what what 
uh, photographer. Um, he, he actually did colored pencil in the 70s back when really like no one was doing it. He was uh, even in a gallery at one point. Um, he did a comic book or two. Uh, then he got into courtroom art and ultimately news photography for most of his career. Well, that was handy for you, wasn't it? To have a... a Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, a photographer uh, who, who, who understood this. Mm -hmm. I asked if he was a writer because I remember a high school uh, English teacher of mine telling me every word of a story should um, further the story. And, yes. it, and if that yeah. word doesn't further it, it doesn't belong. And that's you know exactly the same concept here. Is if, mm -hmm. if the element doesn't further it. So can we look at this one? And uh, I want to ask you what the, oh, actually, I, I should know the title of this, face reality. Ooh, face reality. See, face <laughs> reality is like so vulnerable. But what is the uh, <laughs> smoke or the um, fog? Or what is that in the background? I mean, it means something. Yeah. Yeah, well, this one is a little bit different. This is like a very autobiographical uh, self-portrait. Five years ago, I was having my first solo show at RJD Gallery um, in New York. And I hadn't sold my work before. I mean, I was just stepping into the professional art world. And um, the gallery Sorry, at the end of the show caught fire. I lost five of my best pieces at the time. And they actually had named the show Face Reality. Um, and when I, I remember when I read that title, I was like, that is so dark. And I was like, I even, it was like storm clouds. I was like, something's coming. And um, yeah, then the gallery caught fire. And then I was like, I have to make a piece about art because as people know about this experience who, who know about my art, they know about this experience that happened to me. I have, I should play off of that. And this is also, you know, my work's been about vulnerability and struggle. So I did. And so I drew a piece rather than having a lot of fire in it. Um, I wanted to kind of focus on the aftermath and the smoke, the, the feeling of loss, maybe a little bit of feeling of hope. And so um, I'm actually kind of crawling through the ashes a little bit there, um, rising up just just barely. And uh, yeah, I went with the title of my show to tie it in and it happened to be a title that fit. So yeah, that's, uh, I, that's what I did there. I think this is maybe personally one of my top three favorites of yours. Um, oh, thank you. Just so, I mean, compositionally, it's so amazing. But um, how, like how many photos of yourself for a piece like this do you take and how do you do it? Yeah, um, for that one, um, it was actually a very weird, very weird thing. I took the photos for that before the fire, before even signing with the gallery. Oddly enough, it had no smoke. I was like, I'm gonna be crawling on rocks. It'll have a black background. It had too much empty space in the background. I was like, compositionally, it doesn't work. I don't like it. I moved on from the idea. And then after the fire, I revisit it, add the smoke and the ashes in, and it felt complete. It was so weird. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, I, uh, I was posing for it and I had my dad, now to be clear, I did like take a picture. I don't remember what it was, whether I sketched it out or took a picture of him first and showed it to him. But like, this is my Right, right, right. I get it. I yeah. With. Um, some people are like, how are you in it? But you took a picture. Anyway, I had him take pictures, like close ups of each of my fingers, like the back of my hand, um, maybe like my top of my arm, my neck. Um, so I would guess there was like one photo for the whole thing. And then I took these different close up pictures. Um, it's been a few years now. I would, I mean, that I worked from maybe like 20 different photos. Um, but I'm sure we probably took um, about a hundred, yeah, uh, at least, just yeah. of close-ups of different parts. Yeah. And then I also uh, like, like went to the barbecue <laughs> and smeared some ashes on me, and we did close-ups of that too. And I actually photographed the ashes uh, separately for that. Yeah. So you truly have ashes on you. Yes, I mean, that's, like that's chicken fat ashes. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. 
I just, so your prep work is like, your prep work is massive before you even start. You have, but I also kind of wonder if you have like some sort of clairvoyance or something. You seem to like happen to have things that, I mean, you having this sense of foreboding when you heard the name of the show and then, you know, what followed. Uh, you're, you're an interesting guy. <laughs> um, and I guess this is my favorite. It's hard to pick a favorite. Why can't I? Um, oh, there we go. I want to see if we can get it a little bigger. Oh, it won't. Yeah. Is, is this probably your iconic piece or is it just me? Um, I, I mean, it is a self-portrait so that I think kind of helps it to stand out among my work. It's, it's very loud and kind of directly trying to wow. I, I mean, I think it's one of the bigger pieces of what I've done, uh, especially for its time. It was my first very imaginative piece um, that ultimately kind of sent me down this path of now working underwater, I think, so. So um, you just said something kind of interesting. I think you said it was purposely made to wow. So, um, so the wow factor is normally not something you're specifically going for like in your head when you're drawing are you do you ever think like oh man this one is going to just like blow their socks off or <laughs> you know like what you know you know is that there's that inner dialogue that um oh man people just won't even believe this one or <laughs> is the inner dialogue more um I've got to get this right or this isn't quite right or you know what I'm saying or is it a mis mishmash of everything is there an inner dialogue while you're drawing yeah, I think it's all of those things. Um, with uh, with this one, I say it's very directly wowing because this is a loud moment. Like even if it was a photograph, just as a photograph, it's a very kind of wowing moment versus if my other pieces were photographs, they're not necessarily wowing moments. They're very vulnerable, kind of struggling yeah. moments in a way. Um, and the, just the details of that piece are so, so loud. Um, and a lot of my work is very detailed, but the details are just very, very loud in it. Um, so you keep yeah, saying loud and I, I'm not sure I've heard anybody ever talk about their artwork in a, um, a sort of auditory way, loud versus soft. I mean, mm -hmm. is that something you think about too? Is, I mean, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For example, the piece to the left, it's a much softer piece, very Quiet. detailed. There's lots of skin texture in that. Um, the wrinkles in her hands, there's pores in her nose, the details of the hair. But the details are, are softer. And it's not like, I mean, I literally titled that other piece Adrenaline. <laughs> like, <laughs> what a rush, you know? And um, this one is much more of a gentle moment. It was almost so gentle that I was like, I don't, I almost didn't even draw it. And my parents were like, this would really like, this would be something very different. You should, you should do it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'm glad I did. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, I guess kind of an edginess to my work and sometimes it's louder and sometimes it's, it's softer. I don't know how to get back. Uh, shoot. Wow. Look at that. Um, said there, maybe said there's maybe, pores yeah. on her nose. Uh, yeah, I guess you can see everything. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're not drawing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little too, too close for anybody over 20. Uh, <laughs> I can't figure out. Let's see. Maybe if I... I don't know how to get out. Try hitting escape. Yeah, oh, thank you. I'm sure that will do it, but it didn't. Huh. Anne? Yes. Just go to your tabs and exit out of that tab oh. at the top of your 
uh, computer screen. Uh, thank you. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Priscilla. Whoops. You're welcome. Okay. okay. All right. Is there anything, any one of these? Whoops. I'm still sharing, right? Yeah. Is there anyone you would like to say something about in particular before we move on? Or before I move Any on? of the pieces? Yeah. Oh gosh. Something you um, want to share. Like, you know, because you're not sharing enough in your artwork. We want to hear even more. <laughs> <laughs> um sure. Maybe maybe the idea, something about my work as a whole, that it kind of I mean, it, it was there before you and I talked a few years ago, but it put into words something that was kind of uh happened to be going on within my work. Um but a few years ago, we talked and you basically came up with this idea that artists, sometimes they develop a certain style, a certain voice, yeah. and you build, you call it a box. Um, and it's kind of like a singular direction, a singular path you right. take your work while it's exciting. And then you kind of do that until you get tired of it. And then maybe you pivot or switch to something else. Right. And an artist wants to do that because you get better at what you practice at. So I'm good at skin tone and portraits, but not necessarily landscapes, for example. Um, and I was kind of at this point at the time where I was like, I like what I've done. It's worked, but I'm enjoying it less and less with each piece. And I feel kind of pulled to do something a little bit more imaginative. And I was really debating it back and forth. And now I was like, should I, shouldn't I? Um, kind of could you, could you tell me new. what piece, could you tell me what piece you had just completed when you were in that stage or the, what piece you were working on in that? Yeah, it's up on the screen right now. It's abyss with the jellyfish right there. Oh, that, that was the one, one that you were thinking, I want to, I want to move in a different direction. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I liked how magical it was, how imaginative it was, but it was still dark. It was still dangerous. Um, it was in ways one of my darkest pieces I'd, I'd made, um, but it, it balanced it out with this, with this magic. And I really liked that. And so I've kind of since leaned into that. I made that piece with, yes, that one right there with the couple and the kelp uh, to follow that up. Uh, I've made a third one now that I'm going to be showing next month. Um, and I'm working on a fourth for that. And so it's, it's kind of just called an awareness to what I'm doing. And I'm saying, okay, maybe I want to move in a new direction and, and have this new path with my work and really try to focus on that and figure that out. Because that's right. what's exciting to me as an artist. So what you now. and I talked about was, I mean, it's not like you abandon portraits or your dark yeah. or your skin palette or your dark mm -hmm. backgrounds. You, you don't, you just sort of move, you just sort of shift slightly you know, sort of within the same box, the same framework, yes, it just yes. sort of, and that box of sticking to the same thing, actually, I think it make increases creativity because, because you do get bored, you know, you, you get mm -hmm. bored with um, doing the same, you know, like the same large face sort of thing, face, face yeah, face, and the hands, hands coming in, you know, <laughs> yeah, you feel like, hey, I've done that, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of when the magic starts to happen, and it, it, it I, I mean, I absolutely love this. Uh, oh, your, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, so I want to go back, sort of, to like early Jesse. So this was okay. your first piece, and you said maybe six people saw it. Yeah. What was the first piece that um? more than six people saw <laughs> <laughs> well ultimately more than six people saw that one because there's a uh, 40 something in the room right now <laughs> right, but um, I mean, at the time yeah at the time i think that one uh kind of kick-started things for me okay um i because in college like every summer i would spend all summer working on a piece and colored pencil and and then maybe only six people would saw it and i thought that's what that was going to be another one of and people saw that one. Okay. I remember when I drew Resolve, it's the one on the very left um, of your screen there. That was kind of a little bit 
of a breakout uh, breakout piece for me a bit. Um, I remember when I first drew that, um, that was when you asked me to be in the magazine or Bluey had asked me to be in the magazine. Mm -hmm. I began winning kind of some higher awards with that one. Um, and one of the things I did in that piece was I spent a little bit longer on it and I got more into the colors within the skin tone and the colors within color. Uh, and so that was something I really kind of doubled down on in all my work. Do you know about there. how, oh, sorry. Uh, do you oh, know about how long this took you? Um, that one was like five weeks. That sounds so little now, but that was like five weeks and I was like obsessively working on it. I was staying up late all the time. And, but yeah, that's, that's so little time for me now. <laughs> So if, if that's the little time now, well, first of all, how big, how about how big is that piece? Uh, 20 by 30 inches. Five weeks. That was really yeah. pretty quick for that big a piece. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then how long is, um, you know, how long did this, this one take and how, how big is it? Um, that one is twice the size. It's 40 by 30. And that one took me six months. <laughs> excuse me um six months yes and you're in the studio every day well I mean five days a week yes. and, and I or, believe or, or more like every day yeah oh more like every day and well, it depends. I mean either way <laughs> and you, yes, you you definitely put in what like at least eight hours a day drawing yeah yeah eight to ten every day uh that's how you get to be Jesse Lane. <laughs> a lot of hours. I want to ask you about one one more question first. So um who who can I ask who this was, Oasis? Yeah, that was my wife. Oh. Um at the yeah, that was uh Kinsey. Um and it, it almost was a picture of me because Kinsey uh, was like, water is getting in my mouth. And, and she was like, she's actually like kind of making a little bit of this very tired face because I kept pushing her. <laughs> I was like, just pose for a few more, just pose for a few more. And <laughs> yeah, but I, we were switching back and forth between if it was going to be me or Kinsey <laughs> in that photo shoot. Is Kinsey a photographer? Um, a little bit. I mean, not professionally, but right. like she would, she, she and I have the same training in school. So oh. everything that I was doing, she was doing too. So, you know, and are the these, I, are these taken on your iPhone or are they with some fancy schmancy camera? Uh, it was a fancy schmancy camera of the time, but uh, not by today's standards. Oh, I think it was a little, oh. little one like this big kind of. So is this Kinsey too? Drift? Yep. Yep. Oh. Yes. And then you. So uh, did you did you mostly just work on you and Kinsey because you were available? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I was actually afraid to ask other people to pose for me. Um, because I mean a lot of portraits go through that. I'm sure a lot of people can understand because artists, a lot of us are introverts but no one will want to do it. And then I finally asked one of my friends to do it. And he was like, oh yeah, sure. And he was really excited about it. Um, and now I'll, I'll work with models and I know models like professional models, they're, I mean, it's their career. So it's totally normal for them. They're excited to have the work. And so I, I like working with models now because it's like, I can pick who I want to draw. If I want to get someone with long red hair, I can go find that or, or whatever it is I'm specifically looking for. It's, I'm not limited, so. So are, um, are these models? Um, yes, that one, uh, the girl is kind of a bit of a fr uh, parent's friend, okay. but she does model professionally. And then um, the other guy behind her is, an, is a professional model, yes. And where do you, like, I don't, you know, I've never hired a model. How, how, how do you do that? Um, well, uh, where I go to do it is I live about an hour from Houston. So very big city. Uh, 
So there are a lot of models to work with who work out of Houston, but I just went on Facebook and I entered like Houston models enter into the search and, and saw that there are like Facebook groups for it the way there are for like colored pencils and people like meet up through that. Um, Instagram, there are a lot of models on Instagram. Um, and can I, I searched for you, like are, Houston models. Can I ask you like roughly, uh, like can they be pretty cheap? It depends on two things. One, how much clothing are they wearing? <laughs> and two, um, how long have they been doing it? So I've had models who have asked for um, like $100 an hour. I've also had models who ask for $20 an hour. I've also had models who will do it just in exchange for a print. Because right when a model is getting started, they'll do it in exchange for a print. Oh, wow. So, so mm -hmm. the mo the less the less they're wearing, the more they charge. Yes. Is that right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, well, that makes sense. I would never have thought of it. Um, and it's, it's interesting because when I was, you know, when I started out, it was pre-internet, so um, you know, those sorts of things were not easy to do. So then they just like yeah, out yeah. of my consciousness, right? Because it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I, I find that fascinating like you, you could end up drawing whatever you wanted if you had yeah. the model <laughs> yeah I wanted to do dreadlocks for a long time and I was like I don't know anyone with dreadlocks and then I found that guy right there on the right of your screen um in Houston and so now I'm drawing him and I'm working on another piece with him in it so so how did you um, do those dreadlocks uh like how did I draw them yeah I black I blocked in the black first um, and made kind of a two tone of black and white and then I uh, kind of filled in the rest as a mushy gray not really trying to make hairs oh yeah and then I went in and I actually drew on some hair highlights on top and put some little little shadows like some teeny little kind of triangular sharp shadows in between where the hairs are and then. Um, kind of did some squiggly hairs on the edge. So you didn't use any embossing or you didn't scratch any out. It was all just pencil. Well, I did use some exacto. Oh, some exacto to, to get out some. For the, the very brightest highlights, yeah. yeah. Cool. And did you practice that like on a separate piece of paper or are you one of those that just goes in and does it? Um, sometimes. I will practice. I'll also start on like the least important area. Um, that's more of what I do is I'll just start in the least important area. So not the area by his eyes. And right. All Somewhere up here at the there. top where you can, it's going to yeah, be really yeah. dark. Yeah. Okay. I do the same sort of thing. Cause I, you know, when I used to do practice on a separate piece of paper, I found that it was never the same when I went to the actual piece. It was like mm -hmm. the practice. I just couldn't get the right um, for something, the right feeling, it was just practice. And I knew it, my brain knew it. And so it never. Yeah. Yeah. I'm exactly the same way. It's hard for me to push myself. And I always yes. do these really lousy sketches yes. Yes. or anything else. So yeah. I always just go in, you know, just go in. Yeah. Yeah. And start somewhere that doesn't matter. Well, we are, um, we are reaching the 45 minute point, which is about where we wanted to go. I want to give you some time. Um, but, and I, you know, if, if somebody has, I might just open it up to a couple of questions. I don't know how to get to my chat. Do I? Yes, I do. If you have something, a burning question for Jesse and you can find your chat, um, which may be at the bottom of your screen. It may be at the top. Um, Priscilla Ronda, do you know where you are? Is yours at the bottom or the top? You can type in a question. Do I work on black paper? Um, no. And the reason for that is I know it kind of m makes sense. It's a question I get a lot. I find I get more contrast working on a white paper because those whites are going to be brighter. I find I can actually even get the blacks blacker. Um, and yeah, I want 
visual punch. So I work on white paper. And are your blacks pure black or do you have a color in there? Uh, just pure black. I Because the Prismacolor black is so much darker than any other color, it's, it's really getting uh, that super level of darkness to it. And do you have several uh, decades worth of black pencil stored up just in case something horrible happens? Oh, 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 pencils. I thought you meant pencil stumps. I was about to pull them out. Oh, 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 oh yeah. show us those. That's even more fun. Okay, so I can do about 10 You can see these are a lot of the prisoner colors I've used over the years. I've got those two rows of black at the top. But yes, I do have an awful lot of blacks i think one time i ordered like 250 blacks at once <laughs> wow uh do you have a preference for a particular brand of pencil i think different pencils do different things so it's kind of like do i have a favorite tool in the garage it's like well what am i trying to do um i used to work just with prismacolor so i'm very comfortable with them that said um i like the hardness of other pencils, uh, like Derwent Light Pass, for example. Um, I like the Holbein pencils because they're very light pass. They're uh, very soft. They're almost like a more reliable Prismacolor in a way. Um, but yeah, I'll work with different types of pencils and mix them together based off of uh, what I'm kind of going for. So for example, that, that Dreadlock you saw, um, yeah. that has a lot of detail in it. I'll want a harder leaded pencil for that and maybe the pores in the skin but i'll also start like a skin tone for example trying to blend in from light to shadow be very smooth i'll use a softer leaded pencil for that so yeah i like different pencils for different things yeah and and if you work as much as you do um you, you really get to be an expert on the different brands and how how they you know react with each other do you burnish yes. well yes i know you burnish but do you work with oms I don't use OMS and I've hardly ever tried it. I tried it one time, I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> um, but I don't like the idea that it thins out the pigment oh. because that to me seems like it would lessen the, the uh, contrast because you're taking that same amount of pigment and stretching it, diluting it. So I don't like that idea, so no. So you probably don't use water soluble pencils for the same reason. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and you work flat, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yes. I don't understand. I think you can only do that because you're tall. Because when you're short and you work flat, you're looking like, <laughs> no, I'm serious. And you are I, I know. You're tall. Like when you're short <laughs> and, you sit and you're working flat, you're looking across the paper. You're not looking down at it. So it skews it, right? Uh -huh. But you're so darn tall. You're like, you can look down at your paper when you work flat. Yes, and I also have under my desk, four pillows that I will put in my chair, sit on top of, and then lean over drawing like this yeah. <laughs> to do it sometimes. Um, I'm sure it's not great for my back and neck, but um, I, I've always worked flat and I'm like, I ain't changing now. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I find that really interesting, but I, yeah. If you're short, don't, let me just say, if you're short, don't work flat, unless you're working on a very <laughs> small piece because you're just not looking down at it and excuse it. Do you exaggerate the light areas for more impact? Yes, that's something I'll do in Photoshop is exaggerate both the lights and the darks to create more contrast uh, for greater impact. And then I'll mimic what I've done in Photoshop in the piece. That is smart, really, because then it's consistent, right? And you've gotten it just exactly the way you want it. Uh, do, do you worry, worry about light fastness? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, that is one of the perks of using so many different pencils is that you have like all these options to work from. And so that kind of frees up, uh, kind of adds colors as you begin to have to take some out. So that helps. Uh, Richard just asked if you have influences. For like my art. Yes. Yeah, exactly. um, quite a few. Um, I really love colored pencil because a lot of people ask me why, why colored pencil? Um, and in my final year of high school, we all entered this rodeo art competition. It's very, very huge for high schoolers. It's like this big opportunity. So 
Um, anyway, the top prize winning art from that competition is always like this photorealistic colored pencil. And I was like, I never knew colored pencil could do that. And that was just like, I have to figure out how do I make photorealism in colored pencil? And so that as like a tool is kind of where I got hooked on colored pencil. Um, but I really like the paintings of Adrienne Stein. She's a oil painter. Um, she does these portraits that are very, very colorful of kind of these maidens in the forest. Um, I also like Casey Baugh's work a lot. He does uh, um, a lot of portraits, sometimes with hands in them, somewhat like what I, I'm doing. I'm not saying he influenced it, but I was like, hey, we're kind of doing a similar thing and he's really, really good at what he's doing. Um, so I think those are kind of, um, my top two. I also, for colored pencil, like Cecile Baird for her lighting and Holly Siniskel for her imaginative realism. Oh gosh, Holly. I haven't seen Holly's work in a while. Oh, she is so yeah. imaginative. Yeah. Siniskel. Oh, she, yeah, she's amazing. Um, listen, we are, we need to wrap it up there and there's some other great questions here, but, um, I want to give um, Jesse some time to um, talk about his, uh, what opportunities he has for you to learn more specifically about his um, techniques. Yeah, um, thank you. And thank you for having me. It's been fun. Um, I teach workshops uh, online and in person, but online through my website, jessielaneart.com on skin tone, photorealism, the colors within color of skin tone. Um, I have videos recorded already of my workshops for sale there too. Um, also, I'm very excited to be having my second solo show now at RJD Gallery. Um, they're in Romeo, Michigan. It's uh, happening next month. So if you're in the Michigan area and you'd like to see that, um, the show is also gonna be online too. I'm gonna have some new artwork uh, coming out then that I'll be uh, posting online as well that I'm very excited about. I have one piece in particular. It's very, very colorful, very different from for me and my body of work. And it's kind of going to be a turning point moving forward. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Michigan, um, Michigan in January. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh I was thinking man I bet I could drive there and then I'm like oh I don't know what it's like driving in Michigan in the uh, <laughs> manner um yeah. but wait wait you said something oh I want to ask you about this uh the courses the courses and the workshops before you go on um do you have are they like like you have like one day workshops or like is it a, an array is it like you know two or three day workshops like do you have a a, a variety um good question I have uh, two-day workshops and what I do because my pieces take so long to do right. is I, I don't do the whole right. portrait like the whole face I'll do sections so I actually have for some of my pieces I'll have a workshop on one section and then I'll have like a continuation if you want to participate in that of another section okay. where I'll do like maybe the eye and forehead in one nose and lips in the other um, and so yeah I've kind of got it broken up that way so it's kind of like however far you want to take in the workshop, I guess. Oh yeah, so your show, you were talking about your show. Um, what is the name of the show? It's called Immersions, Revelations of the Human Soul. And you don't have any like bad feelings about that title, right? No, no. <laughs> no okay, well just like, you know, you have like facing reality. Oh, oh like the face reality omen. No, I thought it was very poetic. Okay. very pretty and and very uh highly marketable so it's gonna sell out right <laughs> oh okay great um i i i think that's it unless you have so anything else you want to say jesse anything else you want to share no it's it's been great thank you for having me and as always oh i did forget sorry um this was my first quote that I pulled from your yes. um, a, an article. Love is delicate, beautiful, and graceful, but it also means mm -hmm. opening yourself up and being vulnerable to great emotional pain. That is so true. And you sort of see all of that in your artwork. So really what you're saying is that you are, um, your theme might be love. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in the imaginative pieces, yes, I 
I mean, I think there's room for that in all my work, but um, especially with the uh, underwater pieces, um, I just really see it kind of as romanticism in a way, which I think love is very romance, very closely related to. Um, yeah. One last thing. Definitely. Yeah. Um, if are you teaching at all in person? I just finished a couple in-person ones. It's not on the books yet. Like I was literally emailing them today. I'm going back to Sedona, Arizona. I've been a couple times now. I'll be teaching at the Sedona Art Center again. Um, Sedona is very, very beautiful. Um, I'll be teaching there in next October, I oh. think it is. And Kinsey <laughs> might be there teaching pottery too. <laughs> oh, awesome. So maybe, I, maybe. I, I want to say that... Um, yeah, you know, it was just such a shock when I met you, honestly. First of all, you're gigantic. How tall are you? Uh, six four. Yeah, six four. I'm five one. Um, and but you're just so you know what you are, Jesse? You're just lovable. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So if you get a chance, I mean Zoom is is great. I mean, really, really great. But if you get a chance to meet Jesse, his vibe is awesome. Uh, and that's and I think I want to thank you all for, oh, wait, let me just check one little, just in case. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're going to wrap things up. Jesse, thank you so much. And goodbye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Now I had to figure out how to stop the meeting. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Jesse, why don't you hang out just for a minute? Okay. You'll need to stop the recording. I do, but I can't seem to be able to do it while I'm sharing the screen. I think that's what it is. There we go.